Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Thai Talk with Dan, the channel where we talk about everything Thailand. So, we've had another story sent in, the whores of Tajikistan. So, this is an interesting story sent in again by the crypto strategist or strategist, dependent on where you're from in the world. So let's roll the intro and then let's kick this story straight off. Okay guys, welcome back. So let's get straight in to the whores of Tajikistan. This is not so much a story of something that happened as an ongoing situation. It remains unresolved and any suggestions are welcome. I am currently two months into a six month stay in Sin City. During this time, I have been staying in one of the condos I bought in what is supposed to be a good development. To be honest, I cannot complain about the building itself or the facilities. However, some of the inhabitants leave a lot to be desired and very little to the imagination. You see the usual cavalcade of guys bringing girls back at night and in the early morning a parade of scantily clad Thai ladies passes through the lobby on their way to motorbike taxis and home. This morning, I witnessed two security guards carrying two semi-conscious Thai working girls over their shoulder out of the lobby. They deposited them on the plastic sun loungers near the pool. I can see this a couple of times a week. This is all part of Pattaya and I have learned to accept it. Now, I do not personally bring go-go girls or freelancers back to my condo. I am too cautious about that and prefer to rent a cheap studio in a central location for all my encounters. It is not advisable to let ladies of the night know where you live. Some of them are not entirely stable. In addition, some have been known to be a bit light-fingered and I dislike having to batten down the hatches and secure absolutely anything of value prior to a sexual encounter. A cheap 8,000 baht a month rented condo with just the furniture, towels and bed linen in it is far more convenient for this. About two weeks after I, after I arrived in Pattaya, I remember seeing various stories on the news about a Western woman who had plunged to her death from a Pattaya condo. Luckily, it was not my building. The woman had initially been recruited into a call centre scam in Laos or Cambodia, but sucked at that and ended up getting pimped out in Pattaya by some Chinese gang. Anyway, I remember at that time being somewhat irked by the fact that this woman hailed from Kia Gustan. And she was being described as a Westerner. There is nothing remotely Western about them yet we are tarred with the same brush. This was the first time my awareness of Central Asian working girls in Pattaya was raised. Until then, of course, I knew about the Russian club ladies and they ought to be avoided, but the collection of ladies from the various stands was entirely news to me. On my last visit in 2019, pre-Covid, they were not in evidence. However, I assume with the surge in Indian tourism, the demand dynamic has shifted and now they are here to cater to it. Consequently, at present, there is clearly quite a strong Central Asian contingent in Pattaya. Some of them work in the Indian clubs while others freelance online or on Beach Road. Their clients are overwhelmingly Indian men who are willing to pony up to be with what they assume is a white Western woman from Eastern Europe or Russia. In fact, most, most of these ladies hail from Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, 
Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, or some other stan I forgot to mention. Basically, the, these are flyover countries in the same way that the US has flyover states. Nobody really fancies a, a romantic getaway in Tashkent, do they? Now recently I have noticed quite a few new foreign faces in my condo. These fell into two categories, Indian men and Central Asian women. We seem to have at least seven Tajik women and two Uzbeks living in the building and use their condos as short time rooms. I was able to pinpoint where they came from by talking with a Russian guy here. He was once posted to Tajikistan and recognises their language well. All of these ladies are somewhere between 30 and 40 and none of them will be winning any beauty pageants anytime soon. All of them fall into the chubby category for me. In truth, my taste runs to the leave spinner type girls, so any girl much over 40 kilogram should shed a few pounds in my eyes. With that being said, these Tajiks are probably are, are objectively chunky. Their clients need to spend their cash at the opticians rather than on these ladies. Every day I can see Indian guys lounging around in the lobby waiting to be met by one of these ladies. I cannot bring myself to call them girls. Often these women are dressed in the most bizarre fashion. I've seen one wearing some type of ballerina dress to meet her clients. At other times, boob tubes and leopard skin hot pants. Now I'm not against these clothes per se, but when you have to share an elevator or pass through the lobby while a 40 year old woman dressed in tacky hot pants with a double roll of excess fat around her waist cavorts with a pencil thin Indian guy, it gets real old, real fast. They are also loud, positively boisterous and quite brazen about things. Since they are forced to speak English to Indian clients, you hear all sorts of sexual discussions of what they are going to do. This is in the afternoon in the lobby or sometimes the elevator of a good condo, not in a bar or massage shop. I am far from a prude, but I also have near zero tolerance for people with bad manners. It is quite clear, both in the case of the Central Asian ladies and their clientele, that I am dealing with people who lack the education to know any better. They always seem to be yelling or swearing about something. Once I was in the elevator and the Tajik lady put her hands down an Indian guy's shorts and squeezed. It was an elevator with four other people in it as well, including a middle-aged Thai couple. And we wonder why the Thais think we behave like boars in general. The Thais will just consider us all farang without much in the way of distinction. Stuff like barging past others to get into the elevator first, entering the elevator before others get out, spitting and banging on condo doors like it's a police raid when they forgot their key, are just routine. They are just a really rude bunch of people and I am at the point that I really feel I need to do something. Previously I have not gone all that far. All I have done is chastise the ones I have found and told them they were behaving like animals. The usual response is for them to stop and communicate in whispers with their companion. However, it has no lasting effect. The next day is back to the races in terms of their misbehaviour. It is, is, it, it is as though they have the memories of goldfish. Now, most of all, I am irked by the fact that these women are using the condo as the location of their short time rooms. It's not exactly a great selling point for prospective tenants or buyers, is it? Hey, come live here, guys, where you can see a procession of Indian guys coming in for short time with these tragic horror stories. Not what I would call a desirable feature of a building. The other night, I actually met two of them standing on the beach road near the Red Statue, touting for business. In, pat in Patia, for these not clued in, the beach road girls are the lowest rank of freelancer. It's 600 to 1,200 baht short time down there, mostly under 1,000. These are the people I'm sharing a building with. 
Yesterday morning, I saw another two, the Uzbeks, I think, on the beach at around 7.30 a.m., wearing their bikinis and taking shots of themselves. It was definitely them, and they were undoubtedly preparing bikini pictures for their online or other form of promotional material. Seeing two large ladies frolicking around in their bikinis almost put me off my breakfast. I have to be honest. I can only assume that this Central Asian crew is quite entrenched in the building and committed to continuing the practice of finding clients and bringing them back to the condo for short time purposes. They will therefore continue to lower the tone of the building to the detriment of everyone else living there. I just want to throw this open to the audience and Dan for suggestions on how to proceed. If you disagree with my assessment of the situation and think it's all good, I can also live with that. I'm about as tolerant as I am forgiving and I know that. Now the options here appear to be narrower and mostly legal, at least those that I have thought of. Of course, running a short time room out of a condo is both against the building rules and the law. The problem is, to some extent, proof, but mainly enforcement. If I involve the condo ju juris juristic person, the action taken is very uh, unlikely to be productive. If I go with the police, I will need to pay them to act. They won't just raid a condo or pick them up on the beach road based on a, a report without incentives. Immigration is another choice, but I do not know the immigration status of the ladies. Presumably, Thailand does not offer a prostitution visa, so whatever they possess is not appropriate. However, immigration will also need to be incentivized. The final choice would be to talk to them and try to modify their behaviour. If they were discreet and quiet, I really would not mind. However, I have little faith in their ability to change. It seems to be an ingrained cultural char uh, characteristic of theirs to behave this way. It's hard for someone to go from routinely twerking at some Indian guys in a lobby to a normal human behaviour. Now, as a closing statement, ladies and gents, I have been unable to find any of these ladies on Thai Friendly. I am not sure what platforms they use, even in the advanced members section of the Patia Addicts form. There is next to no information about this type of girl. I am assuming Indian websites are used or they have arrangements with tour guides. Any opinions or suggestions are welcome. Now for me personally guys, I don't know what to say, yeah? To me it's Patia, Patia is just nuts, yeah? And every time I've stayed in a hotel in um, Patia, I've always seen something a bit crazy or dodgy or something that I don't particularly like. Um, I'm due to plan a holiday very soon and um, I don't really like to go to Patia because I don't want to bring kids there. I don't think it's a place for kids to be honest unless you proper stay out of the way but even then you're still going to see all sorts and you're going to hear all sorts. So for me it's not the best place. I'm thinking about going to Rayong or maybe Wahin or maybe Koh Chang. I'm, I'm not so sure yet. Um, but it is what it is in Patia, it's never going to stop. You could literally get them out of the uh, out of the condo and then probably you're just going to get somebody even worse or the same as them that ended up end up moving in. But guys, if you've got any tips or any suggestions, then please put them down in the comments and try to help out as best as you can. Right, so this has been Thai Talk with Dan and I'll see you again very shortly with another video. Oh, and hang on, before I go, I always have to remember this, if you've got a story of your own guys, or you wanna conduct a video interview, and you wanna put uh, your ugly mug like I put my ugly mug on this camera, then please get in contact via tytalkwithdan at gmail.com. Now, I'm off, see ya.